Life Course Ambassador and a PCT trainer, and I wear a lot of other hats as well. Um, my co-host today is Chanel Kuby. Do you want to introduce yourself, Chanel? Uh, hi, I'm Chanel Kuby, and And what else do you do? Um, I do people planning together. Um, I am involved in the A team and I do Special Olympics. So Chanel's a busy lady as well. So yes. what we wanted to talk to you about, I'm gonna share my screen, is we are going to talk to you guys about um, advocacy and engagement because this is something that's very important to Chanel in her life. Correct, Chanel? Yes. We've had lots of discussions about this. And so we started working with um, starting the life course. I became an ambassador um, last year and Chanel has been kind of learning along with me. Haven't you, Chanel? Yes. Yeah. So at Charting the Life Course, our core belief is that all people and their families have the right to live, love, work, play, and pursue their life aspirations in their community, which I think is a wonderful core belief and is something that I believe deep down. And I know Chanel, do you agree with that too? Yep. Yep. So when you think about charting the life course and you take, think about people, um, supporting people across the lifespan, you also have to think of different life domains. And so when they started looking at this with charting the life course, thinking about different um, lifespans, you can find more information in the life experiences booklet. There's some great charts. Um, you could also go to charting the life course. Nexus has a lot of great Available forms and lots of great printable um, free uh, information that you can share, use. So please make sure to check that out. Um, but today we're looking at the life domains. When you think about a person, they have, there's the person, and you have to think about them in context of their family and their community. And part of that is their life domains. So today we're really focusing in on that citizenship and advocacy, but you've also got to think about healthy living, community living, um, safety and security, the social and spirituality, and their daily life and employment. So keep that in mind as we keep talking because everything is all interconnected. So when you look at the life domains and the subdomains, when you think about citizenship and advocacy, a lot of times people think of leadership and advocacy, supporting families, that civic engagement, those type of things like Chanel being involved with the A-team. But we really wanna think about the life domain of advocacy, not just in that broad sense, we need to think about it in a sense of it's voting. It's doing that neighborhood group or organization. It's being involved in those things. It's self-determination. It's visiting with your legislator. It's self-advocacy groups, advocacy training, legislative advocacy, and paid advocacy. It's not just those types of advocation. What we really wanna focus in on today is talking about that self-determination. So, what I did was I looked up self-determination in Merriam-Webster and the first definition is free choice of one's own acts or states without status without external compulsion. And whenever I talk to Chanel, what's the number one thing that you want? Chanel, when we talk about things, what do you want in your life? Um, in my Life, I want to um, do things on my own. That's the biggest thing for you, right? And you realize that there are a lot of other people that are in the same situation that you're in, right? Yes. 
So to give you a little bit of history on Chanel, what was it like, Chanel, before you started participating in person-centered practices and people planning together and charting the life course? What was your life like? Um, it was kind of not good. Um, I was not, you know, I was shy at first and then I couldn't speak up for myself. Um, I had my mom and dad talk a lot for me and staff and stuff. Mm -hmm. And did they make the choices that you would have made for yourself? No. And now that you've been doing these things on your own? Yeah, now I can um, speak up for myself a lot better than I did a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we looked at your advocacy, right? We had some conversations about why this is important to you is because you want other people to be able to determine their life like you did, right? Yeah. What were some of the changes that you made in your life once you started speaking up for yourself? Um, when I started speaking up for myself, I have a better life that I want instead of my mom and dad want. So you've got what you want, not what mom and dad want for you, right? Yes. So what we did was we, you've told me that it's really important to you to do things on your own and to have the life that you want, right? Yes. And you also want to help other people, correct? Yes. Why do you want to help other people? I want to help other people people because sometimes other people can't speak up for themselves and I want to have them to have a better um, life instead of what their family want or what their mom and dad want in their life. Or what their staff want, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so part of that is you got involved with the A-Team, right? Yes. So can you explain what the A-Team is? Or do you want me to explain it? Do I still have you, Chanel? Yeah, I still have you. Okay. Do you want to explain what the A-Team is or do you want me to talk about it? Um. I can try to explain it. Go for it, girl. Okay. Um, the A team is like a leadership that we have in um Yankton, South Dakota. Um, and we help people talk about how they um live on their own and how to um have a better life from themselves. Okay. And part of that is they talk to who? The local politicians? Yes. Yes. So that's where you're saying that it's important to you to advocate for that funding so that you can be supported how you want to be supported, right? Yes. Yes. And you want other people to understand. What do you you want them to understand? Um, I want them to understand that some people don't understand what we go through as a disability like certain family members have. Mm -hmm. And so you want to help family members and politicians and kind of all other people understand what you have to go through having a disability, right? Yes. Yes. And so the types of advocacy that you're looking for, we got this advocacy portfolio off of the charting the life course tools.com and started working on it. 
and our plan is to go through it with everybody who's on the Rivers A team so that they can figure out really why they're advocating and how they can move forward. So this is just a piece of it. You'll see the bigger sheets later on. Um, so the advocacy that you're doing now is the Rivers A team, right? Yes. You advise at ABS. Yep. You participate in our agency strategic planning at ABS or Ability Building Services for those of you who aren't familiar with the acronym, right? Yes. You provide people planning together training when we can be in person, right? Yep. Yep. And you helped advise the local politicians, right? Yes. Like Ryan Schwack and Jean Hanna, right? Yes. So that they understand how those different bills affect people with disabilities, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when we talked about what supports you need to achieve your advocacy goals, you were still thinking about your support. Did you... Yes. Have you decided on anything you want to add to that, or are you still thinking about it? Um, I think I'm still thinking on that a little bit. Okay. So, like I said, it's a work in progress. So, what helps you to stay motivated? Um... When we had talked before, you said that like seeing changes happen, having yeah. changes happen, and support from friends like me, right? Yes. And then how you learn best, you kind of weren't sure about this one, but you said you like to have people teach you by talking to you and showing you how to do something. Yes, and I would like to. Um, somebody standing over there telling you what to do the whole time, right? No, because I don't like that very much. Mm -hmm. And so ways to encourage you were to tell you that you're doing a good job and remind you of progress that's been made. Yeah. Yep. So when you see we haven't completed Chanel's support star yet for advocacy, but this is the first page for or the the first page was what we just went through if we were putting this together as a portfolio. So you can see the things that are important to her about advocacy, what she's doing, and how the supports that she needs to have advocacy in her life, right? Yes. So then this is the inside of the portfolio, if you're familiar with the portfolios from uh, Life Course School. For Chanel's vision of a good life right now, what's your goal right now? Um, my goal is um, to have a big um, house. A big house, or you said a bigger apartment, right? Yeah, yeah. both of those, whatever. Yeah. Decide on. Yep, you haven't totally made up your mind, but you want a bigger place, basically, right? And yes. have your own house. So my apartment is kind of small for me right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. So for part of that is, we talked about this at your last meeting, is that you don't like that rule through Social Security that you can only have $2,000, right? Yes. You want to be able to save up to be able to possibly buy your own house at some point. Yes, and I am just starting on mm -hmm. putting money in my savings account right mm -hmm. now so I can start doing those things. Yep, and you do have a plan to put money into an ABLE account once you get to that point. 
but yeah. you feel like this is a challenge for people with disabilities having only a two thousand dollar limit yes there's a lot of my friends that have that problem too so if we get to that um much amount we have to spend some mm -hmm. so it won't go over that amount right so something that we've talked about is that we want to advocate to change that rule for social security we think that needs to be updated right yes yes so that's part of your vision for a good life it affects you, but it also affects a lot of other people as well. Um, yes. You also had told me that you wanted local politicians to know how you feel about the issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that you want to advocate for funding so that you can be supported how you want to be supported and by who you want to be supported, right? Yes. Yes. So some of the things that you don't want when you're advocating what did you tell me when we talked um the, what i don't want is pe um, people telling me what i'm making it so so um that means it's like if we talked about something that you know, it's a decision for me. Mm -hmm. I would like to make the decision instead of like my mom or my step mm -hmm. for my meetings. Yep, you don't want other people making decisions for you. And we also talked about that when you're helping other people with advocating, you don't want to tell them what to do either, right? No. Right. And you also don't want system rules or regulations to get in the way of everybody having the life they want, right? No. No. So, you know, looking at this trajectory, advocacy is a big part of your life. You do it through people planning together, through your um, activity with the A team. You've also gone through partners in policy making right yes so those are all things that are working and that you've had experience with in the past so we yes. just kind of put those down as what's working some of the things that we thought we could continue to work on is that staying up to date on the political issues that affect you and others with disabilities it's kind of a challenge isn't it Yes, it is. It is, because the way they write bills and laws are is kind of confusing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's confusing to me, too. So that's something we have to work on together, right? Yeah. Yep. And then reaching out to other people who aren't involved and helping them to advocate is something yeah. that you wanted to do, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So we already kind of talked a little bit about what wasn't working because you said that you were too shy to speak up. You let other people talk for you like mom and dad or your sisters. Those yeah. kind of things you said weren't working for you. And um, when we talked, you couldn't really think of things to avoid. Did you come up with anything we need to add to that? Um. I don't think so. Okay, that's all right. If you come up with it, we can always add it. But okay. So, um, I just really feel like this advocacy portfolio is really helpful in thinking about how you want to advocate for your, yourself. And, you know, when we say advocacy, a lot of times we think of it in that broader sense of like doing the A team and doing people planning together. But it's not, it's really advocating for what you want in your life. So people expressing what goals they want and how they want to work towards them, that's really advocating for themselves. And I think we need to keep that in mind when we're working with people all the time. So I just kind of made these bigger so people could read them. 
but we already kind of went through this, didn't we now? Yes. Yep. So these are some pictures of you. Can you tell me what you're doing in these pictures? Um, we're at the South Dakota Dogs Ring in Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. Well, a few pictures of those. Yep. And what do you do when you're in Chamberlain at the South Dakota Gallery? Um, I am help them speak. I speak for um you to help others. Mm -hmm. you do and then I help Brenda with a few things too. So you help do presentations, right? Yes. Yep. And how about that picture? There's you and Loretta, and do you remember that other lady's name in that picture? Uh, no, but I think that is from People Planning Together or uh, my partners, the policy making. Actually, that's Jean Hanna. Uh, so she's okay. one of our local well, politicians. Well, I can't see because she's cut off right there. Oh, I suppose the pictures are in, in front of her, aren't they? <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. But that's when Jean came to visit us, right? And so, oh, okay. so you and Loretta talked to Jean about how important funding was so that you could have the support she wanted, right? Yes. Yep. And Jean has been a big supporter of of people with developmental disabilities, hasn't she? Yes, she yeah. has. So I think you guys make a big impact in our area of the state on how people vote on things and what uh, what they take to peer with them when they're going to peer, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's another, for the A-Team, really it's a grassroots movement that's by parents, family members, um, friends, and people with developmental disabilities. And when we went to work on getting a group together for the A-team here in Yankton, we wanted to make sure that we were following the A-team grassroots national core values. Their mission is to unite persons with diverse abilities and family members to advocate in the grassroots effort, create awareness in the community and advise others. So when we looked at it we wanted to make sure that our agency wasn't giving too much um we the two staff that are part of this group are advisors to that group we don't want to be in charge we don't want to lead that group we don't want to uh put our opinions into what is happening on that group but we want to help them so we looked at it as we wanted a vision for our A team and we worked together with the leadership group. And, you know, we wanted them to have that real grassroots effort and not be an agency mouthpiece. So we looked at finding parents and self advocates to share the information with so that they could take it and run with it. So we wanted them to really advocate for change, for quality services and for choice with people with disabilities. And we wanted that group to understand the issues that are relevant. So we do assist with some of that, but again, we try to be as neutral as possible. And Chanel, you're on this group, right? Yes. Right. Who makes all the decisions for that group? Do I make decisions? Uh -huh. Who makes the decisions for that group? Is it me and Sam, the staff, oh, or is it? We, we do the 18 of our group. Mm -hmm. So you've got some parents on that group, right? Yes, we and have parents and then we have um, some people from and he can, he mm -hmm. can that and got involved too. Yep, we've got people from Yankton that are involved and every decision that group makes, they vote on it. 
and Sam and I recuse ourselves from voting because we are not family members or people with disabilities, right? No. No. So that group is really leading itself and, you know, we still assist them. We assist with rides to Cracker Barrels and looking up sessions and things that are going on in the legislature, but we really feel like having this trajectory has really helped this group to be its own entity and not be an extension of ability building services. It's really given this group uh, a vision to focus for and where they want to go. So they have their own ideas of where they want to go and what they want to do instead of listening to staff or other agency affiliated people and doing what the agency wants. Would you agree with that, Chanel? Yes. All right. So um, something else that we've been using a lot lately in our agency is looking at the life domain and vision tool and looking at that citizenship and advocacy section and how we can support each person how to advocate for themselves. And as part of that, we've been, we did another people planning together right before COVID struck, right, Chanel? Yes. Yep, but because we can't get together in person, we haven't quite figured out how to do something virtually on that platform at this time, right? Yep. Yeah. Although the virus that's going on right now, we can't get right. together right now. Yeah, so we're just all focusing on staying safe, aren't we? Yes. Yep. So right now, I wanted to open it up and see if anybody else had questions, comments, things you want to share. Any questions for Chanel? Hi, Chanel. Um, this is Terry from Benchmark Family Support. Thanks for spending time with us today. I really appreciate it. So can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I had a question on, so when with the A-team and you're working with the A-team and they're helping you guys to, to plan with what's important to you, what do you do if you have a, um, a conversation and and you maybe disagree with other members of your A team. How do you handle that? Um, we kind of like I think we kind of um, talk about it as a group, and then I think we go to our um, A team, and then our A team will figure out how to the situation and talk to our president and stuff for the A team and then we could go from there. Good. So with your A team, because you have uh, help from the staff to um, run your A team, so do you ever feel like um, at times like when you have an idea that you can and the A team facilitators, which are staff from ABS, do you feel like you can disagree with them on things? If, if some things that they're helping with, do you feel empowered to know that it, it's about you guys um, and what you need? Yeah, I think so. I don't know about that for sure. I haven't had a problem with that situation, but I think we have the right to talk about what's, you know, going on and stuff like that to them, so. Okay, great. Well, thanks for, thanks for answering my question, Chanel. I appreciate, I appreciate you taking time with us today. You're welcome. Chanel, I have a question. If you personally didn't agree with something that we were talking about, would you be able to say, I don't agree with it, and this is why? Yes. Yes, you could? Yes. Okay. Have you Thank ever you. done that, Chanel, in the past? She asked if you've done that in the past, Chanel. Uh, 
No. So you probably did, you didn't need to, but you know that you can, right? Yes, I know I could do it. Um, if I wanted something, I could talk to him and say that's not the right way and such. Good. Thank you. Thanks for answering. You're and welcome. Thanks, thanks for taking time with um, working with us today on that because I know it's kind of scary. So thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And I know now we were talking about the A team. How about in your life? Can you tell staff no? Yes, I can tell staff no. Um, uh, they ask me questions, like activities in the evenings sometimes, and I must say, and I can say no. I don't want to go because I don't feel up to going and stuff like that. And when you're in your meetings, do you always agree with what staff say or what mom and dad say? No, not all the time. And when when you don't agree with them, what do you do? I say no, and I just go. And if mom and dad and staff have their own opinion, and then I have my own opinion, and then I go with my own opinion, what I feel what's best for me. Anybody else have any questions? Um, this Elaine, both for um, Christy and Chanel, do you think having spent the time to create the trajectory and to have people have input helps with the decision making so that that there aren't those headbutting kinds of things that happens doing that work up front what do you think chanel do you think having that trajectory for the a-team helped so that we don't have people um kind of headbutting and not agreeing about things Yes, I think it helps a lot of people and then they, they know what they can expect on, you know, and they can use it for their meetings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I would say I agree that it helps us as staff stay more neutral because sometimes our leadership for ABS asks us to ask the A team to do things. And it's a lot easier for me to say, well, we'll have to bring that to the A team leadership committee and see what their decision is on that. Um, so it's clear to everyone, not just to us, that we're not just going to do whatever the agency wants us to do, you know. So it really does give that foundation and it helps, I think, because a lot of the people who are on that leadership group ended up being affiliated with ABS, either a family member of someone who gets services or receives services, um, they are empowered that they can say, you know what, we don't want to do that. You know, we know that ABS wants us to do whatever, but they can say, no, this is why, a an example is our executive director thought it would be really great to have a Facebook page the board of the a team decided that they weren't ready for that at this time they feel like that's a lot of work to moderate a facebook page and make sure that things being posted on it go with their mission and there wasn't anyone in that group that felt up to taking that on at this point and they just said no we're not going to have a facebook group not right now we'll keep it in our minds we'll consider it but we realize the benefits of it, but we don't feel like we are ready to do that at this time. Thanks. I think I, I think for me, doing that extra work up front uh, sounds like it benefits everybody, uh, the agency, the individuals, the families, and the decision making around the team. So thanks to both of you. I've, I've really learned a lot today. Thank you.
Anyone have any other questions for Christy and Chanel? Anything else you want to add, Christy, before we wind down? I, not that I can think of. I just, you know, I really appreciate all of the life course tools and how they help us provide that structure, but they also help us in that planning phases. We really looked to that trajectory when starting the A-team. And I know, Chanel, we've talked about it, that you want to complete that star to think about how you're going to continue to advocate in the future for not just yourself, but for people with disabilities. So I think that's going to give you really that support that you want in the future. Yeah. Chanel? Oh. Chanel? Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add, Chanel? Uh, no. Okay, a couple of things I want you to hear, Chanel, that people wrote in the chat box. They said, okay. thank you. They said, thank from Lori Clark uh, Stetham. Said, thank you so much, Chanel. You taught me a lot today. I appreciate you talking with us. And from Cindy Ellison, she said, you are an inspiration, Chanel. What a remarkable and articulate lady you are. Yeah. So um, if there's nothing else, um, we certainly appreciate everyone's participation in the webinar series. Um, the next uh, webinar around um, the next topic will be the end of September and watch for information to come out on that with um, who the presenters will be, what time and how you can log on. Again, this has been recorded and will be posted on the DD website, I believe. So thanks everyone. Have Thank a good, day, good week, stay safe, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.